Hello, we're going to do a quick review of A to D and D to A conversion. Um, the chapter in your book that this deals with will show you very shortly. Uh, my main focus here is going to be how do you take an analog signal and get it into digital form and do that in a very practical explanation. Um, so let's uh, take a look at the textbook where we're at. Um, chapter 15 they call it interfacing to the analog world is mostly a to d conversion we're going to really cover chapters uh, 15 one the topics in there i don't think they do it quite well enough uh, they don't say anything wrong but we're going to put a little bit more detail in there so you can see the things here if we move to that section very quickly uh, you can read and pick up some of the terminology what we're mostly interested in is talking about the signal. So let's do some really quick history. Um, used to be when you didn't have microprocessors and you didn't do anything with uh, digital information, you would have analog circuits that are built of uh, a whole bunch of discrete parts, individual op amps, resistors, and things like that. And any time that you wanted to do something different with an analog signal, you'd have to build another very complex uh, circuit and it had to be designed and built and implemented on a printed circuit board. Um, then uh, some people came up with um, A to D converters and what they wanted to do was be able to take these analog signals and make digital representations of them and these A to D converter circuits did that um, first at, without a uh, micro uh, uh, processor to do that they just had individual a to d converter circuits that would take some of these uh, uh, complex analog circuits and put them into ic's um, so you would get these uh, analog signals put them on the input and end up with a, a digital representation a digital representation is a bunch of zeros and ones and you probably are sampling it a lot of times saying look now look now look now look now and every time you do that you have to uh, store a series of zeros and ones which is a digital representation of that signal well as time moved along um, microprocessors came along and um, you would take these a to d and d to a d to a by the way get you in the opposite direction if you have a digital value stored it, it generates an analog signal for you um, so microcontrollers came along and said you know we can do this better and as microprocessors and microcontrollers developed they even pushed the a to d converter ic's inside of the microprocessor itself so the microprocessor is doing the same process um, however you don't have access to any of the circuitry it's done inside and you do it through a program and that's when things really sort of took off um, if you wanted to change like if you wanted to filter a signal once it gets in digital form all you had to do is write another program so the big advantage is um, the programming behind this and manipulating digital signals is much easier once they're in digital form to filter out certain noises and things like that than it was to build a circuit and do that so um, Let's move on a little bit. The analog signal that we see uh, on the screen here, um, you can see it just following along this path and do that in these little dots or samples. So if I want to digitize this signal, I have to take a sample at a specific time. And when I get that sample, that's where the dot is, it's going to represent a voltage at that particular time on there. And then I have to change that voltage level, I have to convert that over into a series in ones and zeros, and that's called digitizing the signal, and that's what the A to D converter does. Um, so it's it uh, might not be as easy to uh, do this conversion as, as you think, um, and it's a little hard to understand at the beginning. So let's take a look at a signal, um, an analog <laughs> signal that we have here and you can see that my analog signal is just going like crazy i'd have a hard time representing that with a math formula and um, that's the purpose of this here so what we're going to do is we're going to sample um, we're going to put some samples in here for us very quickly um, 
if I do this in red, these are going to be the samples, and I'm going to draw them on here, and I'm going to sample there, I'm going to sample there. What I'm trying to do is sample at an equal time, and you can see the axis, uh, horizontal axis, deals with time, and the vertical axis with voltage. So I sample, and you can see if I draw a line down there, I was sort of trying to keep the sample times at an equal interval. It didn't quite accomplish that. But those sampled voltages then, at this point, represents a voltage over here. And I do an analog to digital conversion, and I store a series of ones or zeros that represents that, a different series of ones and zeros to represent that, and so on as we go along. So I sample that and do that. Um, the problem is, is if you don't sample fast enough, you're going to lose data. And you don't want to lose too much data. You always lose some going from analog to digital, but you don't want to lose too much. If I sample this fast, um, once I get to represent the digital signal, let me draw uh, some blue lines here to represent that. When I take this voltage level that I have here, uh, this sample, uh, when I store that, it's going to remain at that value until I take the next sample. And then I'm going to jump up to there, and it's going to remain at that value until I take the next sample, which is down here. And that continues on, and that continues on. So when I store my digital values, when I want to have them analog again, I have to do a D to A conversion, the opposite. And this blue path that we see here is exactly the D to A conversion of the signal. Well, that doesn't look too good if you really look at it. Um, let me get my highlighter here. And you'll look here, right in this area right here, I'm losing a lot of data because my signal originally comes up here, um, or my digitized signal comes up here, but my analog signal comes down here. So how can you fix that? Um, let me clear the screen and go to get us another blank screen to start. And you fix that by sampling more often. So um, if I get my drawing point in here and I go in red and I sample like crazy. And actually the math to not lose much data might be a little bit complex, but it works now to if I sample 10 times faster than the signal ever changes, I'll get a good representation. And in this case, um, I won't go and through and draw all of this, but you can see when I do my digital signal, I come to here and I go to there, and then I go to here, and it's up pretty high. I'm not getting a good bit of change or showing you the steps as much as I want to, but you can see even though it doesn't look like the original analog signal as you go along here, um, it's a little jagged, but it definitely represents more the original signal than when you see. And we did that by sampling. Uh, one last thing that I want to show you. Let me bring up another um, empty screen here. Go back to the original signal. Uh, as well as sampling, resolution is a big thing too. So resolution is set by the number of bits you use to store the value. So if I use two bits, which isn't significant, um, this is my voltage range here. These red lines are going to represent the different levels that I can store based on the um, uh, four different uh, digital values, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Well, if, if I make a sample um, from here and I go to digitize that, the only choice I really have is picking this or this digital representation, and that's not too accurate. It's definitely not going to work. Uh, if I want to do something really good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more bits. And we know binary. So every bit that we add, we double the amount of uh, combinations that we have. So if I add one more bit, I have eight. If I add another bit, each of these is in half. I have 16 different things. And these are supposed to be equal spaces. And I can keep on adding bits. And then you'll see that every time I do a sample, I'm going to be awful close to here or here, and I'm not losing much data until I'm there. So if I had, if I had 16 bits of storage, I know that's going to be, every time I take a sample, I have to be able to store that. That's going to be a lot of memory locations until I'm done. 
but if I do 16 bits, my uh, signal has a lot chance uh, to be much more accurate than what's there. And that gives you, I think, a pretty good idea of the um, taking an analog signal and representing it in digital form. Hopefully that's helpful for you. Um, also note that um, we always store our videos, right? So um, these resources would be in the EET 178 course on the portal. I'm in student view, so it looks like uh, what you will see. I go to coursework, and I'm going to go down to that uh, section in the textbook that we're talking about. I named them so it's pretty easy for you to find. And in the presentations area, you'll see uh, the video. It's considered a presentation, and you can review this anytime that you want and see what's there. If you ask a question, a lot of times I'll put them in there. So please look there um, to see what's available for you to learn. Thanks.